So gang, let's take a look at this data. And as I mentioned before, um, we did two videos before looking at the data. Initially, this video here, which was uh, ASMR math live stream we had and the conversation came up about um, exponential growth. So what we ended up doing was taking a look at whatever data we had regarding COVID-19 coronavirus of the infection rate. And we talked about what exponential growth could look like, what a doubling period was, right? And then when more data was available, we did a live stream on Twitch where we did exactly what we're about to do. We, I created a table and put some graphs together and we took a look at those, that data set, right? And it was just for 17 days worth of data. So we did a live stream and then I took the segment where we looked at the data and cut that out and sort of highlighted some stuff through my video editor and uploaded that as a separate video on its own, right? So we have three streams out there regarding COVID-19 coronavirus. Okay, and we are live streaming this as well. So the chat is going and I'll keep my eyes on the chat. Make sure we don't get any troll action happening, but I'll let people have the conversation. And I'm just going to run through the data here for you guys, right? And what we have here, what I compiled together, if you've watched the previous videos or if you plan on watching it, you'll notice that I add a few more columns in here. There's three other columns that I wanted to add, but because the data is sparse, it's not reliable, um, and we don't have enough of it, I decided not to include that, that data. And those three columns were related to information that I was trying to get uh, regarding the virus, what we have outside of China, right? Because we can't really rely on the data coming out of China anymore, right? So what we have here, we got the date. So we're going, the data that I've compiled here is going from January 20th to February 29th. Okay, so we're looking at 41 days worth of data, which is starting to give us uh, a nice feel of what might be happening, right? The data, the noise is starting to disappear and we're sort of, we're getting the trends. We had the trends before, but we can rely more on the data because there is, there is more of it, right? The next column, the third column is the total confirmed worldwide, okay? The fourth column is confirmed in mainland China, and we'll talk about this. And as soon as we look at the percent growth per day, you'll get a feel for why this data is most likely not accurate, right? Because if you look down, so we have mainland China, and then we have data for uh, the number of infected uh, confirmed outside of China, including Hong Kong, right? So that's the fifth column. And again, I should have put the numbers up top, but there's only so much room I could play with here, right? So we have other, including Hong Kong, and that column is the rate of infections outside of China, okay? And to get a feel for how that data is playing out, what I created was three more columns, right? So the first three columns of data is the number of confirmed cases the next three columns is the percent growth per day for each of the columns okay and in the background if you can hear the our neighbors are playing their musicians they recently moved in and they're playing mandolin <laughs> the link the link the link right so we're getting that at times uh, it's sort of soothing to a certain degree so i hope you guys enjoy it if you can hear it so one, two, three, four, five, the sixth column is the percent growth per day for the total number of confirmed, right? And if you start off from January 21st, 21st, and if you go all the way to February 13th, 14th, you'll notice that it was, you know, we started off, it was fairly noisy things were jumping all over the place and then it was stabilizing around 20 percent into the teens and then on february 13th it kicked up to 33 percent right the number of confirmed cases that's because china changed their uh, method of confirming cases and whatnot right so they changed their criteria and the way they were presenting the data and taking in the data right and then after that what you see is 
the chain the infection rate in china just dropping down to basically one percent per day this area is very important to look at right because most of the cases are out of china that's really affecting the total confirmed cases outside of china okay and when we look at the graphs you will get a feel for it right i just want to run you through the table right now the reason that we know these numbers are most likely flawed or not accurate is because the percent increase okay per day outside of china is huge percent confirmed outside of china starting as of basically when china changed the way they were reporting the numbers collecting the data right went into the teens 11 percent 15 14 15 12 10 9 17 and now we're going into the 20s the high 20s and into the 30 percent we even actually hit 30 percent increase in the number of confirmed cases outside of china in a day right that's huge keep your eyes on that this is telling us that basically unless unless in china the virus has burnt itself out and the number of infected is completely collapsed that could be either because china is doing a great job of containing people and they're treating everyone which most people agree that's not the case it could be because the virus has mutated and it's not as severe anymore and it's actually inoculating inoculating people i don't know the correct terminology i'm not a biologist i'm a geophysicist right i just like the data so maybe the virus has mutated so it's not infecting anymore the r not value is completely dropped or the most likely case the data coming out of china is not accurate right we'll find out soon enough the next column after the three percent growth total china and outside of china we have the total number of confirmed deaths okay and then we have the total number of con recovered the next three columns are the fatality rate right and one thing that we're seeing right now if you look at this column the fatality rate basically percent of people that are dying people were coding two percent right and it's sitting at for from january 31st all the way to basically again february where china changed the way they were reporting numbers mid-february it was sitting around two two and a half percent right but because china's numbers are most likely not accurate the number of infected is not rising the way it should because of exponential growth and because the number of death outside of china is growing we're seeing the mortality rate kick up to three and a half percent now okay relative to the total number of confirmed if we're going by the official numbers so again this mortality rate might be real if we believe that the number affected are uh, that are being reported are accurate or the mortality rate is kicking up because there's people dying outside of china but we're not seeing the number infected rise because the data coming out of china is not accurate so that's kicking up the percent the mortality rate right you can take it either way okay and the last two columns is the percent total recovered which is from the confirmed cases how many per what percent have recovered which we're sitting at around 40 early 40 percent okay so that's the tab table i just wanted to run you through that and what we're seeing in the last column and when we see the graphs you'll get a feel for how these look the visual of it right and the last column is death versus recovered as a percentage so initially the number of recovered wasn't very many because people it was taking people a month to recover from this thing right and people were dying so there was actually more deaths than recovered but this last column is showing positive signs because what we're seeing is the number of recovered is increasing and so the number of relative death to recovered is decreasing right which is which is a good thing which is a good thing okay 
Now I know there's a conversation going on. I don't. I wasn't keeping my eyes on the chat. Spider Man, how are you doing? Um, I'll come back to the chat after we go through the charts because I do want to have this segment. Uh, have the segment. Great, really great table. <laughs> Thanks, Zara. There's three more columns I wanted to add but couldn't do it. Right. Um, but what I want to do is make sure we're able to cut this little segment out of the live stream and upload it independently. Right. So let's take a look at the graphs. Okay. So the first graph we're going to look at is the the total confirmed cases. Right. So this is the graph of the total confirmed cases. Okay. And I'm titling this these graphs basically analyzing the coronavirus COVID-19 data from January 20th to February 29th, okay, 2020. And that basically encompasses 41 days worth of data, right? Now, if you take a look at this, on February um, 13th, 14th, which is basically day if we bring out the table again let me bring out the table again so we go we'll go by the second column the x axis is our second column it's the number of days that we're looking at the data right and if you look at day 25 that's when china changed the way they were reporting the numbers and collecting the data right so on day 25 the day before there were one percent growth per day which Everybody agreed that couldn't have been the case, right? And then on day 25 is 33 percent. That's what we're seeing here with the big kick up, because a lot of a lot of new cases were confirmed, right? The jump was, I believe, like 15,000 new cases. We can take a look at the table to figure out what the what the number was. If you look at 25, it went from 45,000 confirmed cases for total to 60,000 or basically 45,000 to 60,000 inside China. So 15,000 new cases were added. That's why we're seeing we're seeing this big jump happening at day 25, right? Now, if you look at this graph, initially you see the it's fairly flat at the first few days and then it's starting to go exponential exponential and then we see the the graph sort of taper off start flattening out that's most likely because the the data was not being collected in a accurate way coming out of china because it was mainly chinese infections that were running the data right and then all of a sudden we get fifteen thousand new cases and if you continue to look at the data it looks flat looks flat looks flat and towards the end in the 39 40 and 41 we're starting to see a pickup again right we're starting to see that pick up again keep that in mind okay here's the number of confirmed uh, inside china so this is total confirmed right this is the number of confirmed in mainland china right again we see the same thing going exponential flattens out in a 15,000 pop up right and then starts going up and it's flattening out right flat so this is linear towards the end in day 40 41 and i'm going to bring up the total again you're seeing a little kick up for the total confirmed in day 40 41 right here's why we're seeing the kick up because the total confirmed includes the number of cases outside of china right so total confirmed mainland china outside of china we're going full-on exponential with the number of confirmed cases outside of china and this going exponential in the last three four days of the number of confirmed cases outside of china is giving the kick that we're seeing in the total confirmed cases okay that that's the kick that we're seeing up there okay now if this thing's growing at the rate that we're, we're seeing in the table outside of china which is basically anywhere between 20 to 30 percent per day that's been the case for the last week or so if we bring up the table let me bring up the table here 
if you bring up the table and if you look at which column one two three four five six seven eight if you look at the eighth column which is percent growth per day other meaning outside of china in the last from day 33 to day 41 right from basically february 21st 22nd to february 29th right growth per day outside of china is anywhere between 17 to 30 percent per day that's a lot that's a lot and that's what we're seeing here serious kick up okay this is the main reason i mentioned a few times that most likely the data coming out of china is not accurate I don't think any scientist, anyone looking at the data would say other than they found a cure, they got they got they got some kind of vaccine that they're giving millions of tens of millions of people uh, or the virus is mutated and it's not infecting anyone and everyone miraculously is getting better, right? Well, not getting better because the number of recovered is still following a normal trend, right? It's still going exponential growth, right? But there isn't huge pop-ups right so keep this in mind the best data right now that we can start analyzing is the number numbers coming out of from out of countries outside of china okay the next table or next graph we're going to look at is the growth per day total okay so the growth per day globally because it's influenced heavily with china has dropped down to one or two percent per day right if we look at the table again let me bring up the table so this is the one two three four five the sixth column so we're about to look at the six seven and eighth columns right and if you look at the sixth and seventh column from basically february 15th day 27 to february 29th day 41 we're sitting anywhere from three to zero three to zero percent growth in china per day which isn't very much very accurate however towards the end we're seeing a little kick up again in the total percent growth per day because outside of china is growing 20 25 percent per day right so all of a sudden the growth per day for the total number of confirmed is going kicked up to three percent on day 41 right which is what we're seeing here towards the end right so this is the growth per day based on the official numbers globally right here's the growth per day in china even in china we're seeing a little kick up right and here's the growth per day okay outside of china and it's kicking up right initially you know there's a lot of noise we had 50 30 kicking up to 80 percent per day so it did the noise flatten out now we're seeing the infections kick up and this trend doesn't look good okay if you take the data from day 25 right and day 25 based on our table and i'm going to provide these tables and graphs in our on our patreon page and our and on our um subscribe star page and i'll post these tables and graphs on our discord and i'm only allowed to do it uh for for twitter and some of the other sharing platforms so i might load these up uh, actually i'll just load them up on patreon that way i can just load up the stuff on one location right but if you look at the table here okay from day 25 is when china changed the way they were presenting the data collecting the data right confirming the data if you cut out the data above that right take out the initial three four weeks of data collection that we've had right and start looking at the data from day 25 24 if you do a just a regression analysis on this this thing's going like this so the infection rate hopefully stabilizes around 
20 percent it starts coming down but the odds are the the growth per day outside of china is gonna from the trend line if you do a just an analysis on it it might even go higher than 20 to 30 percent per day for a next little while possibly hopefully it flattens out and drops but all indications are that it won't okay um, all indications are that the numbers are actually being downplayed okay i thought this graph was important as well so right now the two main columns and the two main graphs that are showing us a more reasonable more accurate something that we can rely on better than what the numbers are out of coming out of china have been this graph as well as the oops, not that one this one right the number of uh, confirmed cases outside of china and the percent growth outside of china both of these graphs indicate that we're just at the beginning stages of this thing the numbers increasing outside of china exponentially as we're seeing here right especially if the growth rate is also increasing per day this is per day by the way 20 percent increase per day 30 percent more reported per day 17 percent more reported per day you do a little interest rate takes an interest rate equation that you everybody uses in economics trying to figure out how much money they're going to owe in a year if they pay a certain percent if you run those numbers with a 20 percent per day exponential growth wow 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 right now these are the percent gross per day right here is the total deaths the absolute numbers what we have right now global right now one thing i wanted to do in the table i also wanted to include was the number of deaths outside of china but the data is not accurate right i created three tables to be able to crunch those numbers as well and i looked at them i ch checked all my sources and things were reporting different some were missing it and i was like okay i can't include this data maybe we'll include the data in next month's uh, update of COVID 19 data that most likely we're going to analyze most likely we're going to revisit this once a month okay and just continuously grow this data and link it up with the work we're doing in asmr mathematics and you know what we're going to create in regards to statistics right a module on statistics and by the way i'm not trying to you know treat this as only a mathematical concept right there's a lot of people being hurt right now but the data is the data when you're doing science you really have to approach this stuff just analyzing the data putting personal feelings aside right which is one of the powers of mathematics because that gives you a clearer picture of what's going on you're not in panic mode you're not going by rumors you're not you're not you're not freaking out and believing every little hype coming in you're looking at the data and analyzing that data and trying to get a picture of what's going on you're not relying on secondary sources to provide you that information right so right now what we're seeing with the total number of deaths with this graph was that it was going exponential and then flattened out right again keep in mind this is total number of deaths we don't know what the numbers really are coming out of china okay this other graph is a total number confirmed recovered right confirmed cases that have recovered which is fantastic this is growing exponentially it's looking a little linear but again the numbers that we're getting are not 100 percent accurate coming out of mainland china and possibly some other countries as well i don't think the numbers coming out of india are accurate there's absolutely no way right three confirmed cases for the last two weeks in india while canada has gone from four to 20 united states has gone from like three or four to i forget what it was now i looked at it before it was into i think it's broke 100 right 
there was one nursing home, I believe, that old age home that's everybody's infected. Like they're quarantining the whole region, right? The whole complex. So um, take this with a grain of salt as well, right? The number of recovered is going to remember there's a delay factor as well. It takes people a long time to recover. So if the number of infected is growing exponentially, right? And it is outside of China, the confirmed cases anyway, then this number will most likely might have a little lag with it, but it should go exponential if the fatality rate is accurate, as they say, which is 2%. We're getting around 3.5% right now, and I'll show you the graph on that, right? So this is the total confirmed recovered cases. Okay. This is the fatality rate, right? Now, it was sitting around 2%. It was bouncing off 2%. And then what you're seeing here, again, on day 24, 25, is when China changed the way their methodology of reporting the numbers, collecting the numbers, testing people, right? That's why we see the click down, right? The mortality, the fatality rate was kicking up, and then all of a sudden, number of infected kicked up, right? 15,000. So the number of deaths didn't kick up on that level. So all of a sudden, we see a little drop at the 24 day mark where it drops back down to around 2.5%. And then slowly, what we're seeing is kicking up to around 3.5%, right? Um, take this with a grain of salt if the number of infected is more then the fatality rate is going to drop which is a good thing right the number of infected being more is not a good thing but the fatality rate dropping is a good thing right so it, it, it's here and there both positive and negative effects here if the fatality rate is kicking up to three and a half percent there we're getting to more problematic areas not that two percent is not problematic right this is the percent recovered from the number of confirmed right we're sitting above 40 percent now right 45 percent of people who were tested and confirmed to have COVID-19 have recovered which is fantastic and again you see discrepancy in the data flaw in the data because on day 23 24 25 24 to 25 because the number of confirmed cases kicked up by 15,000 in mainland China, the percent recovered dropped, which shouldn't really be, case, be the case if we're uh, if the data is not flawed, if something hasn't changed in the methodology, which we know it has. China came out and confirmed it, right? So if you're doing a scientific analysis on this, you have to sort of smooth this out, okay? run filters through this thing so percent recovered is not bad 40 plus percent right and this graph here is the number of deaths versus recovered and the number of deaths was a lot higher it was 140 percent higher than the percent recovered number recovered initially if we look at this table go back to our table this is the last column that we're talking about so the death toll was 259 on january 31st and the number recovered was 187 right from the confirmed cases so the number of dead was a lot higher than the number of recovered which was frightening to some people but we needed more data right and when you start looking at the data the number of recovered obviously is going to be more than the number of fatalities right if the more fatality rate is only sitting at two to three percent so slowly what we're seeing is the ratio of death versus recovered is decreasing which is a great sign right which is a good sign okay now this is all the graphs that i had i just wanted to run through that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the table back up so everyone can see the data okay and again consider this the third sort of official video that we're doing regarding COVID-19 the first one was uh, this one we had here where um, 
this sort of came up during a math live stream um, where you know a conversation came up regarding exponential growth so we took like seven days worth of data and extrapolated to the doubling period to see what the growth was and we did a follow-up live stream in a week or two weeks where we had 17 days worth of data and we did exactly then what we just did now is looked at the tables looked at the graphs and try to figure out what was going on okay let me kick these down and put up the table i'm going to go back to the chat and we're going to talk about the talk about the data talk about what people think okay and um, if i do end up cutting this little segment now where we looked at the data uh, with the graphs um, you can follow the conversation in the next video which will be loaded up which is the full-on live stream okay aside from that uh, hello chat how are you doing 